We are headed to the West Palm Beach Power Boat Show. Last time, we popped down to a boat show. There was a surprise afterwards. Let's check it out. We are leaving the boat show. I had a good time. Did you have a good time? It was a wonderful time. Yeah, Power Boat Show, and it was so enjoyable. Power boats are beautiful and luxurious and nice and pretty. And that have. Was so <laughs> I think sailboats have more systems on them, though. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't think that there's a couple things like there were no wind generators in sight. Yeah, or solar. I mean, you know, power boats are like. Yeah, the engines, power. Right? So we're just heading out, and we were on the way, and we've been kind of throwing around an idea of getting an RV. In addition to Calypso. Yeah. For many reasons. When we're off sailing and we have to come back to the United States for health appointments, or, you know, there's a something that happens in the family or anything we have nowhere to stay and we're spending all this money on hotels so we're like oh well an RV might work and it goes along with travel which we're a travel channel so today we are actually on our way to view an RV that we've been eyeing up they actually they haven't had the one that we've wanted and the one that we want has become available they just contacted us so good news after leaving the powerboat show we're headed that way and we did check out an RV. We'll get more into the details on a later episode. For now, there's more work to be done aboard Calypso. Welcome to Lazy Gecko Sailing. Looking for something exciting, free, and real? If so, you found the right place. Meet Calypso, our floating home. It's not working. We're sailing her all over and taking you for the ride. Please click on subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. It's early morning. We have a ton of work to do, so let's get started. I saw the look of success yeah. standing all, out here. All done. How was so, it? Good. It's all working now. The chain counter's working. Yes. I pulled this apart. It's greased. Um, you can see the white ceiling I put around there. I put a 4,000 down. It's not permanent, but it's um, yeah, it's like medium, so it's strong, which is what we need in here. Just keep the water out of that. I have to bolt this down from inside, but other than that, we're done. Yes, baby. Yeah. I'm so proud That's of good. you. You too, babe. Good job. Our windless woes are over, thankfully. Look at her there, all sexy and ready to pull some anchor chain. This looks interesting. This is the swivel that holds the chain. I'm unhooking the chain, so you don't want your anchor to go off into the water. No. So I just put this bungee cord in. No, I'm just kidding. That's like a that's like a thing. Just keep this down. But I put two lines hooked to the top of the rockna to each cleat, and then I also put a spinnaker halyard down as like a third. And now I'm just I'm now I'm just breaking the safety wire that's on here. Take this apart. And then we'll be able to start taking the chain off the boat using the new windlass. Nice. Yeah. You're so handy. Thanks, babe. You're well, handy. I don't know what I'd do without you. Uh, I hire somebody. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be doing this without you. This thing is only held together by safety wire. So if the safety wire goes, you, you can, it comes right apart, which makes it easy to put together and stuff. But you gotta make sure your safety wire is all good. So I can just pull this back now. Take this little bar out that holds the chain on. This is put together with like Teflon tape. So if I just hit that Teflon tape, this thing just comes apart and that comes out. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna take this, leave that like that, keep that away so we don't lose it, and then pull the chain out. Our chain is original to the boat. It's really not in bad shape, but we want to extend its length. It's unsafe to just shackle more chain on, so a full replacement is in order. Right, 
Reese is joining in on tasks now. Let's get this old chain off. Just got the anchor chain off the boat. So that feels nice. The boat's real dirty now. It was kind of the little operation. Reese hit the button for us. Jeremiah st stood up here and walked it along and then I helped dump it on the dock, but our anchor locker is dirty. We had 120 feet of chain. Uh, that's what the previous owner, actually not the previous owner, John, the owner before that, that's how they hooked it up. Right now I got a little roast in my Instapot. I love this thing, cooking it for an hour in three cups of beef broth, a little bit of Worcestershire, and salt and pepper, and some bay leaves. And then we will make steak sandwiches. I'm happy that you're here. I've been waiting for like an hour. I'm sorry, is it warm out? No, yeah, it's nice. Oh good, it's been cold, so. Here come the 5-0. The police. The police? Where? Well, and why? Oh, WC. the police boat. Oh. Let's, let's see them as they go by. Florida. Their leisurely job. It's the life of a porthole. It sees many, many things. Chain isn't very cool until you buy quality anchor chain. It's freaking expensive and that makes it cool. After wheeling it to the dock, it was time to pull it on board. Using the windlass, we pulled it aboard. Well, after I helped our neighbors, Barry and Fran, grab their anchor, looks like all this anchor work is contagious. Even though you're power boaters, we still love you guys. Jeremiah went to work securing the new chain to the anchor with the mantis swivel. So our issue is still the same. Yeah, it's gonna pile up on you. We still have the same issue, it piles up, but Jeremiah says it's easier to maneuver now. Well, the links are larger. I was just hooking it when it was coming out, and then I would just hold it up and drop it over here and drop it. I'll give you the, the, the true answer yeah. when I anchor, because I'm the one up here, I'm the one that has to deal with it. So we'll see if it's a little bit easier. Maybe it is. I hope it is. Our anchor locker is definitely more full. We have what, 80 more feet of chain in here. Yeah. Ready? Yep. We'll need to figure something out for the piling up issue. In the meantime, I'll lock up the anchor and call it a day. I got uh, safety wire pliers in. Oh! Yeah, I've been wanting these. Aircraft mechanics know what these are. Oh, let's see how they work? Yeah! All right. So it gives you, they give you this weak ass safety wire. And these are pretty small. I thought they were a little larger, but it, I think they'll work. But you can cut the safety wire right with them. And all you do is, like, let's say your safety wire in this. Take the pliers. We go way off here. Put them on, squeeze, lock it so it's on there now. And then you can see it back here. Yeah. And that. So it's down there. Nice. Yeah, so you can you got ace twelve and then so you can see you can go all the way down, you know. And then at the end you take it like a, you do like a like a twist with it, lock it, and then you can flip it off. Same same thing. Beautiful. And then you can you know, you can pigtail it over. Do those excite you? Yeah, isn't that cool? That is really cool. I use these for many years and larger ones, but um, this would be great for the boat. I want to go around and re safety wire everything on the boat. Oh, sounds fun. Yeah. Bad news in the in the uh, kitchen department, in the galley department. All my hard work. I'm a little well, sad. Well, we've been working. We should be making a bunch of uh, homemade pizzas. Oh, the rest of them are in there. They're in here. Yeah, and went in there to convection oven and it just crapped itself. I can actually kind of smell some... Well, the last couple... Yeah, you smell that electronics? 
Yeah, the last, about the last month, it's been doing this weird thing. When I stop, it keeps spinning. So I was like, I don't know, maybe it's failing, or I don't know what was, maybe I did a setting different. Obviously, it was failing. Um, today, I was making pizzas. I accomplished making my gluten-free crusts and dairy-free toppings. And they were all ready to go in the oven. The boys' crusts were here. They are not cooked yet. And when I go, convection, set the temperature to 450, and then you set the timer and you double click, it kicks on. The timer- It doesn't do anything. Yeah, the only timer comes on in the light. Yeah, the timer and the light comes on, but it doesn't well, come on. Well, the good on. thing is, this is a GE. It's a good and brand. we can buy that in the States. Everything else is like, you know, <laughs> Argentinian. Yeah, and usually I'd be like, okay, well, let's shove it in the oven. I don't have an oven. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Can we use the grill? Oh, I mean, we could try. You know who would know? And yay ho. How about? I think that she puts her crust on the grill. Yeah, how good they did. And so can we. Okay, well, you're gonna wanna do these ones. Reese, we've been called in as the B team. We have to start up the grill. Yeah, mom's kinda right that one of the woods have popped off, and two of them have popped off. Oh, the little knobs, yes. Yeah. But it's just spare by the little thing. Yeah. One thing at a time, right? Mm-hmm. Why does stuff always break? We're on a, well, because you're on a boat. Everything breaks on boats. So how is it? Good. I think the grill worked out okay. Yeah, it's working. It's still cooking the other ones right now. I'm gonna take a look at it. Here's mine. I had already cooked the crust on mine, so they're just gonna go in last to heat up. And it smells good, tastes good. I'd say it's working out. We are back at it again. This is our sixth day of working on the windlass slash anchor chain. Day one through three, we got the windlass off. Day four, we put the windlass, the new windlass on. Day five, we put the new chain on. And now today we are redoing our entire anchor locker setup along with our emergency anchor. Oh my goodness. I didn't think it would take this long. We were hoping that the new chain would allow for it to fall in and the bigger links would allow for it to freely flow and it wouldn't back up into the windlass. Well, we have the same problem. It didn't fix anything. It might actually be a little bit worse because we have 80 more feet of chain in there. So now it has less room to drop. We knew that that would happen, but again, we were hoping that it would fix the issue with the bigger links. It didn't. We decided to pull everything out of the locker and remove the divider that separates the two chains. We just had to make the decision whether to pull the divider out or to cut it. The divider will pull right out, but we decided to cut it. Pulling it would create a gap that would quickly fill up with mud. Cutting the board keeps that space filled. It would be simple to cut and install a new board for it if we ever needed to. Are you ready to see this thing come out? Yes. Yeah, you've hated this thing for a long time. I have. Causing issues, huh? Yeah. I mean, I don't like changing the way the boat was made, but yeah. we could always get a new one made, I guess, if we wanted. Yeah, we could, yeah. Jeremiah got a new little saw, and it was time to make the cut. I was thinking I might leave like a strip on the top, um, but I really think it would just, because the chin should be going here and falling into here more, I think it's just going to get in the way and start banging it on that, so I'm just going to chop it down. So the cool thing about this little saw is I can go in and then walk, walk my way over to the wall so that I can walk up and down the wall and make it real nice and straight. He just used the sides as a guide and cut all the way around the edges. We're hoping to free up some space so that the chain will drop without piling up the wall, which is what killed our last windlass. Is it difficult? It's not difficult, it's just pain in the ass to uh, get down there. This is quite the event that's going on. Yeah, you, you're nervous? I've never seen so much road in my life. <laughs> I'm gonna come up as much as I can here, right? Yep. Yeah. He has to dig into his special tools. Interesting. Nicely done, honey. 
there it goes. And you got a new tool out of it. Yeah, I love that. It doesn't look too bad. I can, well obviously vacuum this out, but this will all come off. I'll just scrub it off. It's out. Had that sucker out of the boat. The idea so that split up the anchor chain on one side was 200 feet of our new chain on the other side was chain and rope the whole thing together is called road so now we're shortening the rope the chain on our emergency anchor and then we'll put that in and hopefully our 200 feet of chain can lay nicely over that and we don't have that backing up into our windless problem a fun little project We just measured out our rope of 70 feet. So we have 15 feet of anchor chain and 70 feet of rope. So that's a total of 85 feet in road. And that's for our emergency anchor. Jeremiah's just cutting it now and we're gonna get rid of all the extra. So we have more room in the anchor locker. And then we'll be able to anchor in 10 feet of water and that'll give us a seven to one ratio. So I'm curious to see how this works out. When we first started sailing, we had a really nice couple email us. They were like, hey, we sailed for 20 years. Let us know any questions you have. And I was like, tell us anything, you know? He's like, can I send some stuff? Sure. And he sent like stories about like this and that. It was great. And one of the things he said, you never need more than one anchor when you're anchoring. And I thought that was interesting because if you're reading on the internet, everybody's like, oh, you need two and put one here and put one there for swing currents. And you don't ever need more than one anchor ever unless it's like some type of emergency. We use our secondary anchor up here for emergencies only. So if, let's say we had our anchor out, whatever, and we lost it, well, we could dump this chain out and we could use this other one we have, if we have 10 feet, which is pretty average for an anchorage, 70 feet, um, that way you're not taking up too much room in your anchor locker, dump it out and you're done with it. Um, it's not all chain, so it doesn't put a lot of weight. So that's good. We have 200 feet on our main anchor and we'll have 70, well, 85 feet on our secondary. So I'm just gonna start tie a bow in on this thing. Oh, let's check out your knot. See how good you are. put the rope in there first. Yeah. This is our emergency anchor chain. So there's the 70 feet of the rope that we measured out and then this is our emergency anchor chain going in on top of the rope. Try to make it even. And then I'm just gonna feed in the little leader I have for our main chain. And then we'll use the windlass to put it in. Coming soon on the Lazy Geckos. I'm gonna go for it. I've never seen the inside of a microwave. I'm gonna check this fuse. My underwear are on backwards. Not sure when that happened. This is pretty freaking amazing. Thank you for everybody that has followed us. We have Jason Pinko here today. Inner Dyneema is spliced into itself to right there. You got there. Do you feel like you can administer emergency oxygen now, honey? Having a CPAP on the boat. Jeremiah just left to go be a part of the RV survey. First night aboard the RV. All day. You know it's gonna be rough when you put on your West Marine floaty. It's next to the blue hole in the Bahamas. Somebody said they were gonna go now. Don't snuggle. Uh, well, I worry about a lot of things. It turns that electrical signal into a mechanical. We're going down. Test as early as six days before the day of your missed period. How long are you supposed to wait? Want more? Check us out at lazygeckos.net. Remember, patrons can get complimentary access. You can also visit our Vimeo channel. The link is below. Don't forget to click subscribe to get all of the fun. See you next week.